Boy, is 2024 going to be a good year for game animation, especially stylized animation. We've already had things like Tekken 8, Suicide Squad, and Foam Stars, but we've got Berserk Boy on the way now, things like Blood coming up, which I'm really excited about, and the Plucky Squire at some point, which looks so fun this year at some point, hopefully. I was lucky enough to go and meet Charles Cecil and have a play on the upcoming Broken Sword Reforged. I don't think it'll release this year, but Vivarium is a game I want to make you aware of. It looks bloody amazing and authentically 80s anime. Ultros was released recently, which looks marvellous, and right here we've got Sonic Mania Dev's Evening Star producing something which looks like it's right out from the late 90s, early noughties, Penny's Big Breakaway. The whole vibe this game gives off is the likes of 3D platformers from the PS1 era. I'm talking Gex, Spyro, Ape Escape, Rayman 2, Croc, any of the 3D Looney Tunes games, uh, even things like Mega Man Legends and Jet Set Radio even. What I love is that, in a similar way to how the original Skyward Sword for the Wii had this kind of painterly aesthetic on distant geography, so too does Penny's Big Breakaway by having this sort of low resolution aliasing effect on distant buildings uh, to give it that low poly PS1 feel to this world. Oh, that's just the Switch version, is it? Of course it is. Well, looks like there's an update coming for that soon anyway. Well, I like it, and I think it should be an aesthetic feature to give it some authenticity to its inspirations. Anyway, we're here to have a quick look at the animations. Like any good 3D game character, animations will probably be split across the body, with specific parts moving independently from each other to give a greater sense of fluidity. For instance, Penny can throw her yo-yo in various directions and move around, with her legs animating separately from her torso, which moves freely. Particularly with fast-paced action games, 3D characters will respond quickly to button inputs to heighten the feel of the gameplay. This is evident in most moves that require that feedback, like throwing your yo-yo, jumping or dashing. However, some moves deliberately need you to build up momentum. Not sure where Evening Star got that idea from. So when you move Penny, she won't start running fast straight away, you've got to build up to that speed. So this is a deliberate choice by the devs to not give you that luxury of instant movement. You've got to earn your speed. This also has a B-side effect of not accidentally run- I'm not sure if B-side effect is the correct term, but I like it, I've coined it. It also means you don't run off the edges of platforms quite as easily. That's saved for dashing off them instead. What I like is that Penny's design is highly stylized with a good strong silhouette so that the readability of her actions are clear. You can make a whole series on the readability of 3D game characters starting with Mario or Sonic, but we haven't got time for that today. Penny in particular has these big ear type things on her head. Oh wait, no, it's a hat, which is why she takes it off at the end of a stage, makes sense. The winged hat gives an indication to the direction she's facing, and the front of her head and back of her head are distinctly different, so have a greater indication of where she's looking. All the gameplay action is succinct and streamlined, so that you know that each action has a certain look to it, making sure that the context of her moves is, again, clear. She doesn't tend to change her animation much depending on the situation, though she does hold her hat if she's being chased by penguins, which is a nice touch. Effects animations also help distinguish certain move types, like the dash has this swirl effect, jumping has this little flick thing, and generally all the effects animations have this rounded motion graphic idea going on. It gives it a really unique and consistent look. However, this doesn't mean that Penny can't have a little fun and have some bespoke unique actions for certain situations, without breaking the elegance of the whole animation system. So she can let her hair down and have a little play at the end of a stage with her yo-yo. Okay, so Penny ticks all those boxes, fine, but what are the game devs doing within these rules to show us what sort of character Penny is, and how they are playing around with exaggeration to make all her moves seem fun and appealing? Well, there's the run cycle. That's adorable. It's very bouncy once you get going, and her hat and hair have this nice floppy follow-through to give it this nice sense of flowing movement and energy. It's very nice. And like I said earlier, it takes a while to get moving to that full speed. And as we know, Evening Star are used to handling characters which uh, move with momentum. And when she does an action like throwing her yo-yo, you can see there's a tiny bit of anticipation when you throw, but not enough to throw you off your stride, because you've got to have that response. But it all kind of fits into when she's running and jumping and everything. I think if I had to give an animation of the year award to any movement, it would be Penny's jump. Just look at it! If there was any action Penny does which captures her character completely, it's this one. She's a street performer, she likes entertaining people. Look at the glee in her face as she not just jumps, but soars into the air. Look at the performance of her arms and legs. I love this line of action. I mean, this may very well be the best jump animation I've ever seen. And also, if you can't see Penny's face all the time to see how she's expressing herself, don't worry because you can see it all in this little window here, it's great. She's such a happy character, it's such a nice change but you can see all the different ways she responds to things with this emotion window, because you know that's happening on her face as well. 
it feels like she's actually thinking and responding to everything around her, which again makes sense because she's a performer, an actor, she doesn't just act, she reacts. I haven't completed this game yet, I keep getting stuck and then having to go and make dinner. Uh, so these are just my thoughts and everything so far. Sorry I haven't been able to say more about it, I just really need to get a video out just saying how good this all is. I like how when Penny spins, she does this thing where she holds her head steady for longer at a certain point in the rotation so she can maintain focus on the direction she's going. This is something ballerinas and other performing artists actually do to literally stay oriented and don't completely give themselves a headache and lose direction. That's a really nice touch. I'm not sure it was a totally great idea to give the penguins the same colour scheme as Penny. It makes it hard to spot her in a brawl. And I like how they've used the character Mesh as a way to show her behind objects. That's really cool. I think I'm going to have to make a follow-up video to this at some point. Uh, I just had to get a video out there to say something because it all just looks really nice. As is the music. Oh, T-Lopes, you bloody legend. Uh, I'm just going to freeform this last bit because I just I really want to see if there's anything else I can kind of notice. Uh, I enjoy the momentum as you kind of swing in the air. That's kind of cool. So when you put your yo-yo out, um, you can kind of see the like hangs in the air, just like that that motion of swinging. Like I know it's just a pendulum swing, but you know it's just really nice. I do like when you ride on the yo-yo and you've got that uh, that kind of spin wheel idea. I mean, it's you know it's it's very sonic, but um, it's really cool. Uh, I do, yeah, this is very nice. And like when you skid, uh, it's just really satisfying. Like the response to that is, you know, you kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like a skill thing, but it's, it's just great. I like how certain objects have got little bits of motion in them, like palm trees and other little bits. That's kind of nice because soon it's even bouncing around. Uh, when Penny's captured, I quite like this little zoom in and the fact that they're kind of bouncing on, like kind of, I don't know, what is it when you're jumping to a big uh, crowd of people and you're at a gig or something, uh, surfing, can't remember what it's called, but like the way they carry her off and that that feels very energetic and it's, I don't know, like they're just kind of capturing her and taking her back to the king, like she's not dying as such and it's, I don't know, it's just, it's just cool, like, a lot of character going on there. What else have we got? Oh, the shadow, the shadow's quite nice in terms of gameplay design, like it kind of fits quite nicely. Uh, I do kind of enjoy that the camera is almost like a character in itself, um, like when she swings along the railings, uh, like the kind of zip lines. I mean, I lo first, I love the effect of the, uh, the the yo yo has like those kind of sparks and everything. That's really cool. But like, no, she's you know she's still you know as a character enjoying that swinging sensation. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I don't like the penguins. The penguins suck. Yeah, boss fights are cool. Like you can see some kind of personality in some of the fights. Like the captain, you know, it's just I mean the, the actual the way the character animated. I don't know. It feels very like Mega Man Legends. You know that kind of thing. Like the characters have like flat textures in their face to animate with, um, but they're still kind of three D models. Um, yeah, I really like that. It's uh, just a nice touch. Cool. Okay, again, yeah, sorry, I don't have more to say, but I just really need to get something out um, while I've got the time to make these sort of videos. Um, but yeah, so this is the end of my video. Love you, bye.